Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody watching this. I'm Sur Vora, a chemical engineering graduate student at MIT, and I wanted to talk about an important turning point in the COVID-19 pandemic and how all of us are involved. Two pharmaceutical companies, Pfizer and Moderna, have come up with approved vaccines that are starting to be distributed. While this is incredible news, there's a lot of doubt being sown about these and all vaccines. In this video, I wanted to explain what the type of vaccine these two companies produced, mRNA vaccines, are, why they are safe, and why certain myths about these mRNA vaccines are false. Now, you may be wondering, what even is mRNA? I've heard of DNA, but why is the first letter different, and why is there this lowercase m in front? As you may know, DNA, short for deoxyribonucleic acid, is your body's genetic code. It essentially is what makes you, you, and makes the proteins and therefore the functions in your body work the way they do. It's pretty important. RNA, short for ribonucleic acid, is also genetic material like DNA, just with some differences in the structure. In fact, mRNA can be made from DNA by a process called transcription, which is actually used to make the mRNA that goes into these vaccines. But more important than what mRNA is, is what it does. mRNA, or messenger RNA, is essentially a code that when you decode, gives you a protein from a process called translation. For instance, if I speak English fluently, and someone gives me amazing advice in Mandarin, and I don't know Mandarin, that's useless to me without Google Translate. mRNA can be thought of as the Google Translate of biology, putting the instructions to produce the necessary protein in the body's mother tongue. So now that we know what mRNA is, it's time to ask the question, how does this vaccine even work? The vaccine contains the mRNA in a lipid nanoparticle coating, which protects it as well as fluids called excipients, which allow the mRNA to properly enter the body in an efficient and protected way. The red spiky things on the COVID molecule are called spike proteins. These are what allow the virus to enter someone's body and infect them. The mRNA, when it enters the body, serves as the code for the body to make that spike protein. Once that spike protein is made, the immune system's B cells produce antibodies by a process called humoral immunity. If and when COVID enters the body, these antibodies attach to that spike protein and destroy the virus. Let's do a little bit of fact checking on some of the myths related to this COVID vaccine. Myth number one, something that a lot of vaccine doubters believe is that vaccines can cause autism. There's a study from 1997 on a specific mumps vaccine that claimed this, that this theory comes from. However, that study was debunked because the people that produced it had a conflict of interest and had a monetary incentive to make the claim that they did. There's been no real evidence of this. Myth number two, since vaccines inject the virus into you, isn't it basically the same thing as giving yourself COVID? No, the vaccines that do inject a virus inject an inactive form of the virus that can't cause any harm. And this vaccine doesn't even go that far because it injects mRNA that codes for a spike protein of the pathogen rather than the pathogen itself. Myth number three, since it's only been around nine months since serious development began for this vaccine, this means that tons of steps in testing have been skipped, right? Actually, not quite. Lots of government funding has been injected into the vaccine's development so that companies can do in months what they normally do in years. The sequence of events and their thoroughness is still the same. Discovery was done to figure out what sorts of molecules could create immunity for the COVID vaccine. Development was done to figure out how to make that molecule and how to properly package that molecule in a form that's safe and effective for patients. From there, process development was done to figure out how to produce the vaccine at scale, meaning how to create millions of doses for the millions of people that need to take this vaccine. Once 
Thorough testing was done on these steps. Clinical trials were done to test the vaccine on a willing sample of humans to properly judge whether it works and is safe. The clinical trial that Pfizer, one of the two companies that have vaccines out, for instance, tested 43,000 plus people over a variety of demographics and had a 95% effectiveness, which is much higher than almost all other vaccines. From there, approval by the FDA or the Food and Drug Administration, as all drugs have to go through, was obtained. And the FDA checks for the same things that it always does, both in effectiveness and safety and critical quality attributes of the final product. So the fact that these are approved by the FDA can give us confidence that the vaccine works, is safe, and has lots of data and testing having been done on it. Myth number four, I'm injecting something in my body and drugs always have side effects. So I'll probably die or suffer from the vaccine even more so than COVID could hurt me. Not at all. In this case, the benefits of avoiding a virus that is far deadlier and more severe than the already scary influenza outweigh any mild adverse effects that could happen from this vaccine. And mRNA vaccines are extremely safe in that regard. In clinical trials, for instance, only very occasional mild fevers and soreness, and in very rare cases, a higher fever can occur. So it's absolutely worth taking a low risk vaccine, which will keep you and the people around you safe. If you're anything like me, you miss normal life. You miss hugging, watching sports and concerts, mass gatherings like the football crowd on the left, regular school and work, and a normal economy and country so much. We can get all of that back safely within a few months, but to do that, we need to continue to distance and be safe for just a bit longer, and we all need to trust this reliable, safe, and necessary prevention of the COVID virus. Let's end this pandemic together by believing in science.